Uh, thank you for making the time to come and listen to us. I know it's not very easy. Uh, actually, I realized when I'm working from home, I am more engaged and more involved. Uh, less interruptions, no commuting to work. So it seems I actually have a lot more on my plate. So I appreciate that uh, you were able to make the time to come and learn. Uh, one of the values I'm sure as alumni you understand for Strathmore is uh, lifelong learning. Uh, so, so today we'll be contributing to that and, and building upon that uh, value. So the topic for my slides is um, to beat a hacker, I think like a hacker. And the reasoning is that um, now that we are at home, um, uh, we, are, we are better targets or more prime targets uh, than if we were at work where there is better security. And uh, uh, if you are able to think like, what would a hacker do to try and uh, compromise me? Then you would be able to better protect yourself. Uh, sometimes we are afraid of things because we do not understand them. But once you understand, for example, how a snake thinks, <laughs> uh, that it's actually more afraid of you than you of it or a rat in the house, I know theoretically it sounds uh, good. Uh, you might be able to take better action. I remember a story Elon Musk uh, always says that uh, when he was a kid, he used to be afraid of the dark. Then when he discovered one day that darkness is the absence of photons, uh, photons are the light particles, uh, he stopped being afraid of the dark. So that's what I, I'm hoping to achieve in today's talk, that by helping you understand how a hacker thinks, it's, it's very straightforward when you actually look at it, then uh, you'd better be able to look at yourself, like hack yourself, and see what uh, issues uh, might be pending and what uh, avenues they might take to compromise you. And today, uh, a big focus will be on email and how that can be used to, to compromise. Yeah. So that's the, 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 the thesis that I'm going to approach this talk with. Okay, so uh, this is the workflow. Basically, I'm looking at three main areas. I'm going to do a brief introduction. Then uh, we're going to look at some hacking concepts and then we're going to do some practical scenarios and then hopefully also give you some tips on what you can do to uh, make yourself safer online. All right, so a bit about me. Uh, so name uh, Richard Otolo. I have been in cybersecurity since uh, 2013, having started officially working for a company, uh, a local company called FinTech Kenya. Maybe some of the alumni are working there now. Um, started in uh, something we call uh, sales, sales engineering solution architect for cybersecurity solutions. And over time now I have ended up working in iLab. The benefit of that has been, I've gotten to see both sides of security. Um, maybe you might be aware, there's something we call blue team and red team. The blue team are the guys who defend the networks and the red team are the guys who try and break into the networks. So at FinTech, uh, we were trying to serve banks and how to protect their networks. Um, then uh, now at iLab, we are learning how to break into those networks, uh, cybersecurity researchers, uh, to help uh, those companies protect themselves better. Uh, so that's uh, what I do at iLab Africa. I'm responsible for a research group in cybersecurity. We do trainings uh, similar to this webinar that we're discussing today. And my colleague Maureen will elaborate more on whatever else we do later in the talk. We also do consulting exercises where we do actual pen tests. A pen test is where an organization invites you to uh, hack them ethically. That's why we talk about ethical hacking, that it's done <laughs> using permission from the organization owner. And today we'll be talking about how you can ethically hack yourself. Uh, that's the whole uh, point uh, of this uh, conversation. Yeah. So this is my email. Uh, in case uh, during the conversation you uh, feel like you want to reach out and ask a few questions or uh, something comes, comes to your mind later, uh, just please take note of it. Rotolo at strathmore.edu. All right, so uh, questions. Uh, you might have questions that pop up during this conversation. Uh, what I'm suggesting is that you type them in the chat. My colleague Maureen is looking at that chat and she will collect them, summarize them into a Google Doc, uh, which she can share the link with me uh, through chat. Then uh, I will handle them at the end uh, of the talk, yeah? Uh, then if you have any follow-up questions, you can just use the raise your hand feature and uh, I will select you just going down uh, the line. So I encourage you, if you are to get the mic, just introduce yourself, what organization you're working for. Uh, if you are an alumni, which year you are in uh, for the sake of the rest of the participants and some networking. Uh, I might do a poll uh, as we go on, uh, but basically I will be asking you questions on what you've learned 
uh, we'll be asking you to volunteer for a certain practical exercise and then I might have a knowledge check quiz um, as we proceed, time allowing, uh, essentially, as we go ahead. Um, so if I may speak briefly about this practical exercise, uh, as I mentioned, attackers will try, one of the most popular ways of compromising people is through email. And we want to bring that home to you in a very real and a very practical way. So this is the scenario that we envision. Uh, we'll ask you, I will ask you, or I'm asking you, uh, if you're interested in participating in this exercise, to please share your email. Uh, there is a participant called Maureen uh, down here somewhere. Uh, or Maureen can just type on the chat uh, so that people know you. Uh, if you're interested in participating in this exercise, the whole point is that um, an attacker will send you an email that will be an avenue to compromise you. Uh, so what you want to demonstrate to you is, is show you how that can happen. So uh, what I'm asking is that um, you give us, you send Maureen in her private chat, your, uh, either public or private in case you want people to reach out to you. Um, send her your email with a corporate email and your name as well. Then she will feed it into our campaign management system. The system that we use to automate or to, 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 do, to do these kinds of demonstrations. Um, then I encourage you to just keep on looking through your email. This is the one webinar where I encourage you to check your email even as you listen, uh, but don't get too distracted and just do your normal processes. Let's see if uh, you're as aware or as in tune into what attackers might try to do. Um, she will also send you, before she sends you uh, uh, the final email, she will ask you to like respond to the email and give us permission to do this kind of activity so that we don't get into trouble later uh, saying we are trying to hack you. This is purely for demonstration. It's 100% safe. All right, uh, so I hope that is clear. In case of any questions or clarity, just drop them on the chat. Maureen is ready to assist. And as an incentive for people to uh, respond or to take this up, we are going to give rewards, yeah? Uh, we have a platform called Code Red. It is full of cybersecurity training. Admittedly, not all of you might be cybersecurity geeks like ourselves, but maybe you have kids uh, who are interested in getting into a career in cybersecurity. Uh, so we have a platform through our partner EC Council, who will be also be speaking to us uh, later in the talk. We are giving out um, uh, a free access one month uh, to premium cybersecurity courses. Okay, so I've talked about how to volunteer. Private message Maureen, your corporate email address. Then uh, she will uh, give you a disclaimer. You respond to the disclaimer. And then uh, just look out for any email that you feel looks a bit uh, suspicious that uh, you might uh, want to, you, you're not so sure. Let's see, let's see how people will, will handle it. Yeah. All right, okay, so uh, summary. In, what is this talk about, like, uh, like an abstract, if we might get into? Uh, this is a statistic that uh, I, I don't have any backing for. Uh, it's based purely on conjecture, some things that I've seen, that you, and I, I will try to prove to you why, that uh, remote workers or hypothesis are twice as likely to be hacked and I will demonstrate why that happens and why you should be concerned about that. Uh, the assumption I'm working with is that uh, many of us are working people or your students, you're using the internet to work, to study, to play, um, to communicate with your friends, to socialize. And so by being on the internet already, you are exposed. And I want to, to show what that exposure uh, looks like and also help you see uh, what you can do about that. All right, so some background on the context of where we are at. Um, for organizations that have cybersecurity teams, uh, maybe large corporates, uh, the likes of Safaricom and some banks, they are having to face, and even not even security teams, let's just talk about IT teams. The fact that the COVID pandemic has forced us to work from home means, uh, for example, if I may use my wife as an example, I hope she doesn't mind, um, that uh, her organization, uh, she's basically working from home. She came home with her laptop, yeah? And she needed to access some files from the office. Uh, the VPN link had to be set up. And I think at some point it had issues. The IT guy had to log in remotely into her machine and do that kind of configurations. But for some of those files, she actually had to go to the office, collect them with a flash disk and come with them back, uh, back home. That already means that the files have left a more secure environment. Uh, but just to give you an example, the files that typically live on the corporate intranet are now no longer there. 
employees are downloading large files and there's this concept of what we call shadow IT um, where people are bypassing normal channels because they get frustrated if the corporate VPN is not working. Let's just use Gmail and Google Drive and get this thing over and done with. The problem with that is you're logging into Google Drive with your email, with your Gmail. I will show you how a Gmail address can be compromised. And if somebody has a Gmail credentials, that means he has access to those uh, Google Drive documents. Then, especially if you're C-level, you have corporate strategies, you have uh, intellectual property, and uh, any other sensitive information belonging to the company, that means the company is more exposed and the IT security guys have no idea. Then uh, another trend that has been happening a lot is all these messages about Corona or Safaricom is giving 2,000 shillings to everybody uh, who's been affected, to all its subscribers. Click on this link uh, so that you may benefit. That already is an idea of what uh, is happening. Or you get an uh, advisory. Uh, we, we, we are changing, we are moving away from the office, something from HR, blah, blah, blah. There are many ways that uh, people are leveraging and it's becoming a boon. And attackers tend to do this. Whenever there is a large or major event, it's one of the mindsets that might also, you might also keep in mind. Uh, whenever there is something major, for example, it's Christmas or Valentine's and uh, people are giving out gifts um, and uh, uh, companies are giving out uh, promotions. Then you find an email telling you, oh, Safaricom has awarded you uh, a prize, click on this, uh, get it and so on and so forth. Just to tell you that during major events, this is a boon for attackers to try and ride on that wave where people's guard is a bit uh, lowered in order to compromise these people. Then uh, people working from home also, uh, this might not be so much there, but uh, fake cred login credentials, especially if you're using, uh, excuse me, Google Apps for Work or Office 365 uh, to log into your corporate office email. We, we can't show it now, but it's very easy to actually set up a fake page that looks exactly uh, like one of these pages. Have you put in your passwords and then we collect it in the back end. Uh, then you realize nothing has happened. It hasn't opened. Uh, but then the attackers are very clever. They now send you the proper link. Uh, so when you click it again, it actually opens the real page. But what has happened is that they have harvested. We call it harvesting. They have harvested your credentials and they can now use them in the back end. Maybe even go change them or just continue accessing your email without uh, you knowing. Uh, so they'll then, uh, that's the last point, impersonate you and log in into your own system. So just to show you an example of such a screen. Um, yeah, so this would be a screen I'm talking about. Uh, so it's very easy to replicate a page like this. So some of the important things to look out for um, is things like uh, the, if you can see my annotation. The HTTPS, we always talk about this padlock sign. Yeah, let me just move this uh, a bit. So uh, this, this one needs to be cautious when you, whenever you're clicking into a sense, your internet banking, your corporate email, uh, be on the lookout for this particular uh, set of things. The HTTPS means it's encrypted. This is the, what we call the URL, Uniform Resource Locator. I know I've uh, identified on my screen, not a very good draw on the top. Yeah, so that uh, URL from Microsoft as an example. So just go look at what is typical for your organization and keep it at the back of your mind. So if it looks suspicious, you can either reach out to the IT guy or somebody knowledgeable around IT to just help you uh, figure that out. Then the padlock shows that this is a trusted site. So sometimes you get a warning from your browser telling you this is not a trusted site. Do not ignore such warnings, uh, take them seriously they actually mean that somebody is impersonating a site that um, can uh, it, uh, compromise you. Yeah. Okay, so there's something we call in uh, cybersecurity, the concept of hack value. And I think uh, people might uh, be asking us to yourselves, why should I be concerned about uh, being hacked? Uh, what, of what value? It's a question I get sometimes. I'm just little old me. Uh, I work in this very small department in organization. Nobody really cares if I am hacked, so I'll not take security uh, very, uh, very seriously. Uh, so the concept of hack value is that um, um, 
whenever an attacker or a, somebody who is keen on compromising an organization uh, looks at you, there's something that they see that's valuable to them that might not be apparent to you. So for example, if you're working in say a Strathmore, uh, uh, in a little old corner, maybe you're an admin in the exams office. Well, exams are sensitive. Somebody might want to get access to those exams. Let's say you're at the front desk um, and uh, you, you click on links that you should link or you put in flash disks that have not been scanned. Uh, the value to that uh, attacker is that you're an entry point into the organization. And from there, there's something we call pivoting. Uh, where they can move through the uh, organization, get more credentials. Again, a story, another topic for another day. For those interested in pen testing, we can always have that discussion. Um, yeah, so depending on what level you're at, either the reception or if you're the CEO uh, who has access to more sensitive information, then uh, your email becomes even more valuable. So number one, I want us to do a small activity. Uh, let us go to this website. So this is a project that uh, some guy, he was fed up with uh, all these organizations getting compromised, our emails are stolen. So they, he wanted to show people very quickly to know has your email been compromised in a particular site. So he came up with this site. You can see the name here. I hope it is visible. So just go there and type in any email, any email that you use to work, study and play online. Then once you type it in, uh, click on this. Uh, this is my personal email. I like using it for everything on the internet. Uh, then you click on pwned. All right, so I put in my email. Uh, have I been pawned? That's the question. Pawned in cybersecurity means if you're playing chess, uh, you have the pawns, yeah? So pawned means somebody owns you. They have uh, hacked you, yeah. So have I been pawned? So personally, as you can see, I'm told, oh no, you've been pawned. Uh, pawned on three breach sites. Uh, we can leave it to that. So what does this exactly mean? Uh, let's go to the sites that have been breached. There was Canva, um, then Linux forums, Zynga. That kind of tells you what kind of sites I like uh, visiting. So Canva, Canva. I go to Canva because I want to set up uh, templates. Some of the things we do offer training, so we have to come up with posters and nice looking presentations. So Canva is a site that's very useful. Uh, they already have very beautiful graphics. So I went in, set up an account, uh, way back when. Uh, so it turns out, May 2019, uh, Canva were not very keen about their cybersecurity. Uh, so somebody compromised it and they suffered what we call a data breach. That they were, if you, if you imagine, imagine a website as a box that stores a lot of data about people. When you create an account, it's stored somewhere. So that there's hack value, which I'm going to demonstrate in having all of those accounts. So in May 2019, uh, Canva was breached and uh, 137 million subscribers. It means it's a very popular platform, used world over. 137 million records was stolen. Then these attackers went online and sold them. So this guy for haveibeenpawned.com probably either bought the, that database or he um, got it for free. Then he set up a website that allows you to search through all of those records to find out whether your email is there. So when I typed in my email, it went and searched and said, ah, your email was actually compromised in uh, 2019. Uh, so what did they steal? Email addresses, duh. usernames, names, sites, and passwords, uh, which are stored as bcrypt hashes. Uh, we, we don't need to get into that uh, right now. And um, uh, so, so, so what that means is my email has been compromised. Like somebody out there has my email and my password. Um, and what that means, if that, now they, they did some Googling and found out Richard is a CEO of Safaricom. Ah, wait a minute, I have his email and his password. What if I'm a lazy, well, not, this, not say lazy, well, actually I am. <laughs> uh, I've seen the question about password management. You handle all these passwords in the chat. Uh, so, so you keep on reusing your passwords on different sites, yeah? I'm sure there are many of us out there. But what that means is that somebody out there now has a username and password. They can, uh, if you have hack value to them, you are some C-suit level in an organization uh, that they're interested in. And there are very many types of hackers. I won't get into that, but it could be corporate sponsored. Maybe China wants to attack Kenya, so they're targeting the Ministry of Finance, which actually happened through email again. Or um, they're uh, they pissed off at what uh, a certain organization is doing, so they want to make a point. These are the anonymous people. Uh, maybe you've heard of them. Or they're just script kiddies, people with nothing better to do, and they go on the internet. There's so many tools out there that they can do hacking with, and they find your credentials out there. They see, can I hack you? 
or maybe you have a Bitcoin wallet or address, whatever. There's so many hack value possibilities. But the point is that your email has been compromised. And I believe uh, some people have seen that. Or the Linux forums. Linux forums is good because I learn about Linux uh, as an operating system. Uh, it's a forum where if you have questions and challenges, you can uh, reach out to people and they'll assist you. So even they, being an IT, just it goes to show you that even IT guys can also be compromised. So let's not put fake, too much faith into the systems. Let's also have a healthy sense of uh, suspicion. Linux forums compromised. Again, my password is my email and password are out there. So if I'd reused my password in Canva, in Linux, it's out there. Zynga, they do games. There's a time I was very much into words with friends, um, uh, uh, vocabulary and competing and all that. So me, honestly, I downloaded the app. I gave them my email. Then turns out 2019, just last year, they were compromised. What could I have done about that, you know? Anyway, so uh, just to show you how an attacker would get your email and password. And then now to go back to the slides to show you what value, uh, what would I do if I was an attacker and I had your email and password? What value is that uh, to me? Yeah. All right, so uh, this is the value of, uh, this is uh, from a site by a guy called Krebs. Krebs is a, they call him a cybersecurity evangelist. He writes a lot about cybersecurity. He has connections on the dark web, both hackers and the good guys. Then he publishes everything he hears uh, it's like hot news for cybersecurity, so it's a good guy to follow. Um, anyway, so Krab says, the value of a hacked email uh, affects your privacy. People will know your calendar. If you're a CEO, I now know you're planning to go to Mombasa next week. That means I can reach out to your organization when you're away and do a social engineering call. Hey, I call them, hey, by the way, uh, maybe send an, an email impersonating you saying, I'm stuck in Mombasa, please release some funds. Uh, retail resale. Uh, attackers can actually take that email that they compromised and sell it uh, because it gives other, them access to your Facebook, because of course our personal email is the same one that I use for Facebook and so on and so forth. Um, my Skype, uh, my Zoom, yeah, if I do Zoom hacking. Then financial, if I'm using the same email to process my bank accounts, that's why it's important to separate your emails. Social email, uh, official email that you only use on official channels, because uh, official channels are likely to be more secure. You'd imagine that a bank is less likely to be compromised, say, than a site for games. Yeah. Then uh, employment. They can go through your CV. They can apply on your behalf, create a whole fake profile, uh, get information from sites you have subscribed to and tell them, hey, by the way, I forgot my credentials. Please reset them for me. I want to log into the job site and upload my CV, whatever. Uh, the email essentially is a channel to so many things, uh, and it is so crucial. Uh, harvesting, email contacts, then spam. Uh, something that's not here is also the idea of ransomware. Now that I have your email, I can actually send you an email that uh, is able to compromise you and uh, you, you, uh, you, you download ransomware to your machine without you knowing. Uh, just to quickly show you value in terms of dollars. Um, so one prominent credential seller, this is Krebs speaking, in the underground. He sells iTunes. For those of you who are in, on Apple, your iTunes accounts are worth $8, 800 shillings. Uh, on the dark web. Somebody out there is willing to pay 800 shillings for your email. I think that's a point to ponder, like 800 bob. Yeah? I got it for free from Gmail, but somebody is willing to pay 800 shillings or from Apple or whatever. Uh, just, to, just going back, they know what they can do with it. Yeah? Uh, FedEx.com, United.com, $6, Groupon. I know these are not sites that we have in Kenya, but it just kind of gives you the level. If it's Verizon, maybe you're Safaricom Academy. These are both uh, telcos, yeah? Of course, Facebook and Twitter, they go for $2.5, maybe because there are so many, <laughs> they don't know who to attack. And uh, also criminals face that challenge, like they just won't attack everybody, but let's not make any assumptions, yeah. All right, uh, steps that an attacker would follow. So uh, briefly, I just want to get again into the hacker mindset. Like just to show you that they do this very same thing that we're used to. If you're living at home, you have something valuable, a huge fridge, um, and uh, you want to protect it, and maybe you're a thief, you want to steal it, what would you do? You start by going around exploring what are the avenues to get into this house. Uh, then look for some weaknesses, find out what time these people sleep. Um, and then uh, maybe you need some special tools because you realize they only have a glass window without burglar proofing. So you need a glass cutter so that they cannot hear you uh, when you break in then you break in, you need a way of carrying that fridge. So that same methodology is the same one, the, the same kind of thinking, the principle behind it that hackers follow. So by understanding that we can do something we call the kill chain. 
If there's that chain, then you can find points in it that you can actually disrupt uh, so that they do not end up uh, compromising you. By the way, back to the story of the have I been pwned. If you found your email compromised, the recommendation is that you go and change your password. It's that simple. Uh, just go change your passwords, put a more stronger password. Then uh, the idea of password managers again, uh, which I hope we can address during the question and answer, uh, comes into play because uh, the challenge of I'm handling so many passwords, what do I do? Uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah. All right. So if uh, stealing a tie is like that, what about uh, breaking into a system? Um, so there are two main phases. If I might uh, get my uh, annotation tools, I'm almost winding up. Uh, stop. So uh, if you can see that exploration phase, then exploitation. Exploration, uh, similar to breaking into somebody's uh, house, is to find where the weaknesses are. These are what we call vulnerabilities. In computer systems, vulnerabilities are you're using a very simple password. Um, you have not updated your machine in the last 20 years. Uh, so it means that software has some issues that can be compromised. Um, uh, you do not have encryption for your hard disk. Uh, so, so vulnerabilities are things that compromise. In cybersecurity, we have three main pillars. We call it CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So anything that compromises the confidentiality, like not having encryption. Encryption means nobody can see it, so it's confidential. Or integrity, somebody can come in and modify a document. Uh, maybe you have a Google Doc that has employee salaries. Uh, the person has your email, they log in and add themselves an extra zero, something like that. Uh, those are vulnerabilities. Then scanning and testing. Uh, so they use special tools to find holes uh, within your uh, systems. Uh, so this again is the stuff of pen testing, very technical. Uh, but just to give you an idea, um, when, when stealing a car, maybe you come with several kinds of keys and see if it can fit in or not. Then uh, they find a way and they gain access. Uh, sometimes they are not just keen to leave very quickly, they actually want to stay and observe. So they're sitting on your network, learning how things are going on. Uh, there's a quick story of a venture capital fund that lost millions because uh, they were transacting with somebody in China, even here in Kenya, somebody in Kirinagarod, he was telling me, he, was, he got an order for spare parts from China uh, via email. Uh, he trusted the email, uh, sent them out the spare parts, got some fake invoice, only later is realizing this thing is actually fake. So there are people who sit on the network and understand how you do your thing. So that's why it's important to actually scrub your network, do pen tests, and yeah, anyway, so on and so forth. So those, that's the kind of the process that um, the attacker would follow. So in the first phase of exploration, uh, what he is trying to do is, um, let me get my pencil, um, experimenting, learning your network, he's using his creativity. So hackers tend to be very good at uh, computers. And so if anybody's interested in that, that's a prerequisite, networking, Linux, that kind of thing. Uh, persistence, uh, the difference between attackers and cybersecurity teams is that the attackers have the whole day. A guy is sitting at home, like me in my pajamas, I, I don't want to go work and look for money. Why don't I have people and do that? IT teams, on the other hand, are stretched. They're handling users with the printer that is broken uh, while this attacker is just exploring your network. Then uh, once they break in, again, just using some of those techniques, analysis, problem solving, like how do I move from this network to the other, uh, using a lot of know-how. And for, if you guys in IT, of course, you understand the aspect of looking out for vulnerability reports in order to secure your systems. Now, the problem comes in when workers are working from home, your home laptop does not get security updates, does not get Windows updates, antivirus has expired. That's a vulnerability, that's an attack waiting to happen. Yeah, all right. Um, so I will just quickly uh, talk about some of the things that you can do in the meantime. So um, cyber hygiene, uh, in, in no way, uh, people, uh, they are the, the kids right from when they're young, they're taught to be safe online, similar to what they do when you're washing your hands. Like before eating, wash your hands. Um, when you wake up, wash your face. Um, and uh, after coming out to play again, wash your hands. So cyber hygiene becomes that kind of thing. So the equivalent of that from a cyber security point of view uh, is, um, like uh, uh, passwords, if the kids, they are, they are given passwords from a very young age. So they're made to understand that passwords are a, an avenue that people can use uh, to, get, um, uh, to get you or attack you. Uh, so, so change them often. Uh, so those are the, some of the things that I, I also recommend. Uh, implicit deny all, have this mentality that don't accept everything first. In firewalls, we call it deny all. 
deny everything and only allow what you can trust. So it's that kind of uh, mindset. Then don't click on unknown links from emails that you don't trust. Uh, mobile phones, there are um, applications that tend to want to install without, from outside the Play Store, for example, disable that. Social media, again, privacy settings, uh, do not reveal too much information about you. Because once I have your email, I know you're going on holiday, uh, it's a problem, you know? Uh, so what you want to do is now do a demonstration. Um, uh, Maureen, tell me you are ready now. I see you have sent me a report, yeah? Yes, I have sent you a report. We've managed, I think I've managed to get around five emails, uh, yeah. but uh, our participants are very keen. None of them has fallen short of our, <laughs> of our, that's good. Of our, of our fish. It's a good problem to good, have. Yeah, but I have sent you do, the report, yes. Yeah, what we can do is show them how you created the email uh -huh. and then maybe, uh, I don't know if it's possible to show the actual email as it comes. Maybe you can send it to my email then I will demonstrate that particular email. Are you able to do that very quickly? Yes, I can do that. All right. As you do that, maybe we can jump into question and answer um, uh, so that I give it time for my email to receive that particular fish. Then okay. Maureen will show us how she sets it up, sends out the campaign, and then uh, I, as a receive, recipient of that email, can be tempted to uh, fall for something. Uh, so, so yeah. As she does that, uh, I think I can now go into the chat. As we agreed, we can be typing our questions in the chat and then uh, we respond to that in case somebody has, um, they want to use a follow, do a follow up on the microphone, just lift your hands and I will uh, select you. But let me quickly go in, let me see. Um, I think I saw one question. All right, from a person called WB, what's your take on password managers between LastPass and one password? Which one would you recommend? Then Wellington, similar question, do you trust password management sites? If yes, which one would you recommend based on your IT knowledge and research? Uh, all right, so those are the two questions that I've seen. Let me handle those because they are related. Um, and to do that, I want to share my screen also. It's interesting you asked that question because we were facing the same challenge. Um, as a team, we are collaborating and there are many sites that we have to log into uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as using our team email. Uh, either it's our Google Drive, or it's our Canva, if you're setting up something, or it's our YouTube page, which I encourage you to go and see some of the videos we've done. Um, yeah, so essentially we have a lot of passwords that we have to keep on tracking on some note, not, notepad document. On a personal level, maybe you have um, passwords that, uh, you, you don't want to keep tracking them. Uh, I have, like, like, maybe let me show you just a quick demo of how I use it. Yeah. Uh, on my browser, I have, uh, a tool called LastPass. I'm a fan of LastPass. <laughs> Already you can see I'm biased. So LastPass essentially is a place where I store uh, all my passwords. Uh, so in case I want, and they're categorized in different areas. In case I go to a, a website, uh, for example, that has education. As you can see, I also reuse my Rikotomax at Gmail password for Coursera.org. I don't need to, uh, maybe I can even go there. I don't need to remember, keep on remembering what was the password that I, I had saved. 20 weeks ago, you yeah. uh, I can just go in, uh, click on the login page. Uh, it's good, the internet is very quick. Then you see this, uh, if I may get my annotation tools. Um, you see this thing over here, it tells you LastPass has saved one password for this particular site. Uh, what you're seeing here is also I'd saved it on my browser, which somebody has, had asked, do I trust uh, password managing sites? No, not really, I don't. We've seen issues of plugins that are able to uh, compromise the browser. Uh, so, so I only do this, I, I, I wouldn't want to save my internet banking password on my browser. I don't think that's a very good idea. But password manager tools can actually be useful. So uh, going back into the, yeah, so if I click on that, it tells you LastPass has a password here. Then I can go in and click on that, it will autofill. I click, I log in and life goes on. I don't need to remember what the password is. So what happens is I have one strong password for LastPass, which I can use to log in. And then, uh, uh, which, which now like is one key for all the keys. So if that is compromised, then, then you have a problem. Uh, so just again, to go back uh, to that slide. 
So as I mentioned, we were facing the same issue. So one of my colleagues went ahead and did some research for us. We were also wondering what is the best password manager to use? Uh, so I went quickly back, picked up an email and could paste it. So if it doesn't look very presentation friendly. <laughs> okay, so there are different types of password managers depending on uh, your needs. That's what she says. So what are the, those, those types of passwords? It, it can either be a desktop manager, which is installed on the computer's hard drive. So you store it locally. Uh, the one, last pass I have sits in the browser. Yeah. So th that's a portable kind of uh, password manager. And they store those passwords in different ways. We won't get into the nitty gritty. Password hashes, either on cloud or locally and so on and so forth. All right, so some things you need to look out for when you are selecting a password manager. Compatibility with your devices. Uh, so what my colleague did, she compared uh, two password managers, LastPass and Dashlane. Unfortunately, I don't have information about what the questioner asked, but this can be a guide. Like what do you look out for when you're uh, looking at a password manager? Uh, compatibility with your browsers. Are you a person who likes Firefox like myself, or you're a Chrome guy or you're Safari? Um, you want your password manager to be portable. Why? Because I also use Chrome, I mean, I use Firefox on my uh, mobile phone. So if I have LastPass also working on my mobile phone, it means I have a seamless experience uh, or on my tablet, you know, then uh, so uh, as well compatibility to your, um, what do you call it, your operating system. Then the security that the password manager uses. Uh, here you can see that uh, um, Dashlane and LastPass use encryption and hashing methods based on the SHA-256 and AES. These are some of the strongest cryptographic algorithms currently until, uh, uh, what do you call it? This is uh, quantum computing comes along and <laughs> changes things. Uh, uh, so, so definitely they are using very strong uh, encryption. So if you're considering a password manager, find out if they're using this kind of encryption, SHA-256, AES, American Encryption Standard 256. Um, interesting, last pass was hacked in 2015. That's the last thing you want to hear, uh, that they've been hacked. And that just goes to show you that even these security companies, even the security gurus, hence that aspect of, um, what can we call it? A paranoia. So don't commit your very sensitive, what we call the crown jewels to some of these systems. Like maybe your internet banking password, those very sensitive things. Employ something we call two-factor authentication. Don't just rely on the password. Uh, two-factor authentication means maybe you've interacted with KCB. They have the, that the SMS, the one-time uh, password that they sent you. Uh, so you log in with your password, but then you receive something on your phone which you also put in. Uh, rely on systems like that. Don't just rely on passwords because also these companies uh, can be compromised. Uh, zero knowledge, I won't get into that. Then user friendliness. I like LastPass because it's on my browser. I click, I'm done. No, no many stories, yeah. So that's a, a brief on uh, password management or uh, uh, passwords. So I am now going back into the, is there a follow-up question on that? or I can move on to the next question. Please raise your hand. I'm looking at the participants uh, tab. Uh, Maureen, uh, can I now go back into the um, demo? Yes. Okay, so, uh, okay, so in front of me, I have an email uh, that has come. Important message to all team members. Please read carefully. Uh, the HR department uh, via office mailer. We, we did a test <laughs> similar to this uh, yesterday. And because you can see I have 71 and read emails. I'm a very busy man. Yeah? <laughs> uh, so I saw an email very quickly. I was like, me, I like processing my emails quickly. So I, 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 I clicked on it quickly and I'm reading it and HR is saying, dear Richard, as you're aware, the HR department was working on several group policies related to HR, governance, Bosch. The code of conduct policy is now finalized and being published. The new policy is posted on OneDrive and can be accessed from HTTP, blah, 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 very legit looking site. Uh, please make sure that all of, you, all of you go through the updates as they're important for you. Please contact us if you have any suggestions. I don't know, Maureen, if you're there who did a spelling mistake, but that is also an issue. Like hackers sometimes are not very English savvy. So if you start seeing spelling mistakes, especially from people who you know, uh, know English, that, then that, that, that can be a sign. Uh, so probably this is something the system already has put in as, as, a, as a hint to you that uh, uh, this email might be yeah, tricky. Uh, please reach uh, by reaching back to us by clicking here. Before I click on the link, 
uh, two things to note is that this email was able to penetrate our email domain. Of course, we have employed security, but uh, security is not 100% effective. Uh, so it shows that emails can still penetrate even if you have some of the latest solutions. And that's why email is so popular uh, for, to be used by attackers because um, uh, it's a direct link to the intended recipient. You go to uh, dark web, collect a number of emails, find them, craft an email like this, and that's what uh, Maureen will show you. Say, make it look like it came from the HR department. Yeah, so I, I quickly read in, oh, HR wants me to process this thing. Okay, so let me click on that. Uh, this link this link leads to an untrusted site. Are you sure you want to proceed? HR possibly, so this is our Strathmore a system warning me, which is good, very encouraging. So when I clicked on that link, I can just do it again uh, so that you see it opening. Proceed. Yeah. It takes me to this page and says, alert, you have been assigned a phishing awareness information security training. Please check your inbox notifications. So we are saying, once we realize some employees are susceptible to this, then we need to tell, teach them about phishing awareness. So instead of organizing a class uh, looking for calendars, are you available, are you available? These people, once you have the solution in your environment, they will learn for themselves uh, at their own pace. Then you can do the campaigns, maybe every month, just to assess how susceptible people are. Uh, then they get uh, this notification. Uh, that link you clicked, uh oh you have been phished. Um, you clicked on a link that was sent as a part of a phishing simulation attack. Uh, so whichever of those two links the person clicks, you want to have double redundancy in case they don't click the first one they can click the second one. All right, so I will stop at that point. I will ask now Maureen to take over. Um, uh, what she will do, she will briefly show us how the platform works behind the scenes. Thank you, Richard. I will quickly show you the admin side of the Office solution. So uh, if you get it for your organization, of course, we'll have your details. So it is your admin, your IT department that will be running the simulations. Uh, what we've done today is called the entice to click campaign. So we are basically trying to see if if we send you a link with maybe quick uh, information, if you're drawn to clicking to it. So quickly, I will run a campaign like what I did with Richard. I hope you don't mind if I use your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I will. I will report you later. <laughs> Um, so the, uh, that's the name of the campaign. Sorry, Maureen, I cannot The see. Office solution has some already existing templates. Like I, as an admin, I did not have to type that email. I just came and found it here. So it could be a company announcement, or maybe we could try coronavirus because that's what's trending currently. Uh, and just to mention that, uh, a lot of attackers will capitalize on information that will grasp your attention real quick so that you do not even have to think about it. So if, if for example, it's something from HR, you definitely want to process that email very quickly and then just know what, what it is about. So that's the catch. For this one, maybe let's say, maybe it's an update about COVID-19 working from home. So yeah, that's a good one. At, at the side, I have a template which has the details, uh, and then the sender email. So this one, I'll just pick this one. Uh, the name of the sender, human resource. This is the subject. What will appear as the subject of the email? Then I need to add the people that I will send this email address to. So if it is a large organization, I could as well just import it, but for the purposes of the simulation, I'll just use uh, Richard's email. Uh, and then add him, then import this list. So if it was, it was a large organization, you could have the CSV or you could pick it from an active directory. And then here are some templates that you could use uh, as, the, as the user. And then the training types, you realize Richard got an, a suggestion to attend a training. So if I realized uh, Richard is prone, 
I'll, I'll just maybe direct here. He needs training on strong passwords. He needs training on impersonator from all fish or mobile security awareness if I'm running an SMS fish. So whatever training that you see appropriate for that user, then you, you can select it there. You can preview the email. Uh, this is how it will look like. And then, sorry. Then I come here and create. So this is, you need to at least All right, so in seven seconds, five, four, three, I'll receive the email. Let me jump into my inbox and uh, check. So I have just launched yep, a campaign. Yep, come. Uh, Maureen. Yes. Can I share my screen briefly? Yes, you can. Just to show guys the email has come in. So this is the email that Maureen created. So it says work from home policy. Hi, Richard. On behalf of our organization, I wanted to express blah, 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 coming highly trafficked co working space. I've been tracking the news daily quite obsessively and struggling around that. So notice HR, very concerned about how we are doing when you're working from home. Uh, accountable enough to do a job, Slack, room, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, okay, so, uh, so I click on that link and then uh, the same uh, scenario that we saw happens. Uh, alert phishing information then very quickly just the aspect of training that she was talking about uh, so the training that i'm recommended uh, is this one dear richard you have been assigned security awareness training for improving the overall cyber security posture click on the button below to log in so this is a legit email then once i click on that i will be taken to training i do it on a personal level and then i can proceed 